we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We glorify your holy name, Lord Father. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. As we as we wait for for people to log on, uh, let's just open up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for this day that you've given us, for waking us up this morning, Lord God, for allowing us to see this beautiful Sunday morning that you've created, Lord God. We thank you for the air in our lungs. We thank you, Lord God, for the roof over our head, for the clothes on our back, for the food and for the food in our bellies, Lord God. We just thank you this morning. We thank you. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord God. We thank you because you are our provider. Lord God, we thank you because you have, you are, you, you've allowed us to see another day, Lord Father. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this beautiful sunny morning, Lord God. Father, Lord, as we come before you this morning, as we prepare to bring worship unto you, Lord God, we ask you, Lord Father, that you just prepare our hearts and that you may prepare our minds. Lord God, that your Holy Spirit may reign in this place. Lord God, that as we log on and prepare to, to partake in worship, Lord Father, we just ask you, Lord God, that you visit us where we are right now, Lord God. Lord God, today, that today be the day that, that, that chains are broken, that today be the day that prayers are answered, that today be the day that, that you reveal yourself in some form or fashion to us, Lord God. Lord God, those who have been praying and have petitions before you, Lord God. Lord God, I know that you hear their cries. I know that you that you see their tears, Lord Father. We just pray this morning that, Lord God, that you may reveal to them this re reveal yourself to them this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you. Father, we pray and we ask you, Lord God, if there is any sin in our lives that is keeping us from getting closer to you, Lord Father. We ask that you forgive us, Lord God. If there has been anything that we've done that has angered you, that has disappointed you, that has offended you in any way, Lord, we pray and we ask for your forgiveness, Lord Father. Lord God, that we may be able to draw closer to you, that nothing stand in the way of being closer to you, Lord God. Oh, Lord Father, we thank you. Oh, Lord God, we worship you and we praise you, Lord God. Lord God, that you may open up our hearts, Lord God, that you may open up our, our minds as we prepare to worship you, Lord God, in spirit and in truth, Lord. Lord God, that we just give it all to you, that we don't hold back because you are worthy. You are, you are worthy of it all. You are deserving of all of our worship and all of our praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We glorify your holy name, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise, 
every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, my Savior, God, my healer. God, my deliverer, yes he, yes, he yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Worship you, Lord Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy, hallelujah. Glory, glory. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you.
Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, your presence, your presence is heaven to me.
enthroned in his father's love destined to die poured out for all mankind God's only son perfect and spotless one he never sinned suffered as if he did all authority every victory is yours all authority every victory is yours Thank you. 
to exalt him, continue to magnify him. The Lord reigns, the Lord is this, the Lord is sovereign, is sovereign. The Lord God is in charge of you and I's life. The Lord is still on his throne, regardless of our pandemic situation, regardless of our world social issues and situations. God is in charge, regardless of who we are, where we come from, God is still in charge. He's seated on the right-hand side of the Father. Regardless of the personal issues and problems going on in our homes, our God still reigns. Lord God, we thank you. Bless his name in your own living room, wherever you have, continue to bless him. Lord God, we praise you. Lord God, we worship you. You reign. Allow God to reign in your heart. Allow God to reign in your mind. Allow God to reign in your home. Yield to him, surrender your totality to him, your home to him, everything that pertains to human existence into his hands and bless his holy name, regardless of what your situation is, your circumstances or issues going on in our world. Bless his holy name, magnify him, bless him, come into his courts with praise, praise him and glorify him. Lord God, indeed you reign, indeed you reign, indeed you are sovereign. Indeed, you are all. We thank you that you created us. We thank you for making a way for us to know you through Jesus Christ. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells with us, that teaches us and leads us. Thank you for your salvation work, O oh Lord. Thank you for loving us, O oh Lord. Thank you for your protection and your guidance, O oh Lord Almighty, in our life. This morning, we bless you. This morning, we exalt you. This morning, we magnify you. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We yield to you and we surrender to you. We praise you. We bless you. And this morning, Lord God, as we praise you and we worship you, we want to say, have mercy on us for every individual sin we may have committed or are committing that does not honor you. We pray that by your grace and your mercies, O oh Lord, you forgive us our sin in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we also pray that you forgive our corporate sin, any sin that the church has committed or is committing that does not honor you. We pray you forgive us. And this morning, may we find favor with you, Lord God. This morning, may we find favor with you in the name of Jesus. This morning, we yield and surrender to you and proclaim you alone as our God, as our Lord, as our sovereignty as our peace, as our hope, as our deliverer, as our defender, as our everything. We thank you. We give you glory. We lift you up and we exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And this morning we commit our service into your holy hands, that you being God will have your way with us. You being God will be in full authority and control over us. You being God will we will let your will be done in our individual lives, in our individual homes, in our relationships, in our community, in our nation, in our states, oh Lord Almighty, and in our individual different gatherings, oh Lord, that your will will be done, oh Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor and we magnify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Children of God, we thank God this morning for bringing us together. We praise him. We give him glory. I, I have been blessed in the past two weeks for having the opportunity to sit down to be ministered to by Sister Jumi first. We, we were blessed with Sister Jumi's word that came to us on um, um, shadows. We thank her so much for allowing herself for God to use her. And also last week, brother Michael Franco spoke to us on the subject of fear, breaking fear down and teaching us how we can live a life not 
rooted in fear, addressing the recent issues going on in our world, the racial discrimination and all the different issues, discriminational issues going on in our world now. Brother Franco addressed it. And this morning, I, I, I am coming to ask, by God's grace, having relaxed and having had the opportunity to be ministered to myself, I am blessed that these people are with us in our congregation that can allow themselves for God to use and to speak to us. And so we want, I, I personally want to say a big thank you to them. And I want to say they should continue to wait on the Lord and allow God to use them on the journey that we are on together as a congregation and as a family. Sister Jumi and Brother Franco, God bless you. Continue to grow in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I'm going to speak to us on, a, on, on, on speaking from Philippians chapter 1. We'll look at Philippians chapter 1. Verses 1 to 4. Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And I will be speaking on the Father's family. The Father's family. Without much ado, let us go into the Word of God and listen to what God says in Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 6, please. Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. This is what the word of God says. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in, your, in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ's coming. Other translations say, until the day of Christ Jesus. We thank God. We thank God. This morning I'm speaking on the subject, the Father's family. We live in a society these days. We live in a world these days where there is a lot of issues going on in our world. There is a lot of lack of God in our world. There's a lot of problems and issues and people struggling in our world. This passage here gives us a picture of the, the, the way the church in Philippi lived their life. I personally believe that in this time as we are battling racism, which is not of God, which is a sin, and does not have to be encouraged and supported in any way by any human being, God has called us to love one another and to live in love and unity. The same way as we, we see that racism is not right and is not of God, the same way we see that viruses and diseases are not from God and, are, are to be, and something is to be done about it. In this modern day, God has called the church, who are his people, who are his children, through Jesus Christ, to do something about the situation. We see from the early church, as Paul writes to the Philippi church, Philippian church, and the church in Philippi, saying to them that in the verse 2, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are God's children. And God intends to do something in our world. We see right from the beginning of Genesis, God has loved human beings. He has cared about human beings. And he, he through sin, as Adam and Eve sinned against God and brought a division between us and God, God 
has by his grace and mercies reached out to us through Jesus Christ to bring us back into a relationship with him. The word of God says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We, have, we all somehow have fallen short of the glory of God. But God did not allow or did not want this falling short to remain forever. So he gave Jesus Christ. And they that accept Jesus Christ as their Lord, he gave them the right to become sons of God. We became sons and daughters of God through accepting Jesus Christ. And so now we live in a world where there is a lot of turmoil. We are battling a global pandemic. We are battling racism in, in USA. And this racism even is found in the church as well. Discrimination on all levels found all around us. The world is, in, is somehow in a turmoil, a lot of fear, as Brother Frank was talking about. We live in a world of fear. We live in a world of worry and concern. But by God's grace, he has called the church in this day of fear, in this day of turmoil, in this day of worry and concern and sicknesses and virus to do something about it. God intends to do something about it through his church. God intends to do something about it through those of us who have accepted God as our Lord and personal Savior and living for him to be able to do something about it. He says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and call on me, then I will hear from heaven, forgive them their sins and to cleanse them and to cleanse their land. God has given the mandate to the church to be able to do something about it. The church being you and I, his family, the church being the family of God, the bride of God, he has given us the opportunity to do something about our current situation. But this is the thing. If you and I, knowing very well and understanding very well through scripture, that we have favor with God and we can begin to pray, we can begin to minister, we can begin to do all the things that we need to do, and even being obedient to Jesus Christ, who says that we should go into the nations and win, the, and win souls. We should go into the nation and preach the gospel, the good news. Even in this modern day, even in this day that we are in, you and I cannot achieve the success that the Father wishes for the church in our world this day if you and I do not come together as one in battling evil in our world. And we see here, when you look at the family of God, the Apostle Paul says again, and I go back to the verse 2, he says, grace and peace to you from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. From our Father. The, the church in Philippi grew because God himself began to grow the church. When you look at the church, the, God yearning to bring human beings to himself brought us into a union with him through Jesus Christ. And the apostle Paul and a team of believers were committed to going around preaching the gospel in a world in those days that also had its difficulty. There was discrimination in those times. There were, there were all sorts of things going on. And God called the Apostle Paul with some believers to go around the world preaching the gospel and leading them to Jesus Christ, leading people to Jesus Christ, into a relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to understand one thing. In going further in this subject, the unity in the church, seeing ourselves as brothers and sisters, to understand one thing, that the, that the church is and was formed by the supernatural God. 
God himself decided to bring the church together. When I say the church, being you and I who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, the word of God says, and Jesus, I quote him, he's saying, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Jesus says, I will build my church. In this modern day, in this situation, in all that is going on, Jesus says, I will build my church. Not anybody, even though we are people that will have to come together in advancing and pushing, pushing the agenda of God forward, he says he will do it. Not me, not any individual, not anybody, but him, Jesus Christ. And so now, we see the supernatural formation of the church going on. Under the supernatural formation, there are three things that are talked about in this passage that I want to use a few minutes to break down. The first one, the, the three things are the restraint of the spirit. The second one is the, the, re, the release of the spirit. And the third part, the result of the spirit. So now, come with me back to Acts, please. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 27. The restraint of the Spirit. God is building his church. The, the apostle Paul and some believers are going around winning souls. But this is what God did. When you come to Acts, chapter 16, on talking on the subject of the restraint of the Spirit, Acts 16, 6 to 7. And Paul, his companions, and Paul and his com companions traveled throughout the region of uh, Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mercia, they tried to enter but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them. God had called Paul. He was going around preaching the gospel. And they come to certain towns, but the Holy Spirit would not allow them to enter. The Holy Spirit restrained them from going into Asia. Now you might ask yourself, didn't the Asians need God as well? Jesus came to die, as I have said already. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But Jesus came into this world and he died and he made a way for you and I to come to God. But this is a case. Jesus had died on this earth. He had ascended into heaven. Years after, Paul appears in the scene. And Paul is going around winning souls for Jesus. And the early church is growing and the church of Philippi must grow as well. But yet still, the apostle Paul, who had been called by Jesus Christ himself to go around and to preach the gospel and to win souls, wanted to enter into Asia, and the spirit of the living God, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who was supposed to empower them and to strengthen them and to guide them and to give them victory, restrained them from going into Asia. God for his own reasons, decided not to do this. You see, this is something you and I, as children of God, can learn from. That we live in a world this day that needs the church more than ever before, that needs our preaching more than ever before, that needs our prayer more than ever before, that needs our encouragement that the children of God, the family of God, will begin to do something supernatural in the lives of people that need it but there comes a time where the child of God must learn and understand the restraints of the Holy Spirit. You and I need to learn from this. To know when to stop and to know when to progress. To know when, while we, the children of God, are supposed to win the world for the Lord Jesus Christ, are supposed to have effect in our communities and be a blessing, there are things the Holy Spirit will not have us do as a congregation. 
which means we need to pay attention to him. Now, going forward, let's talk about the release of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to do work with us. He wants to use us for glory. So look at Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 10. Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 10. Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 10, and I read. The, as I said already, the Holy Spirit resisted Paul from going into certain towns to preach the gospel, reasons to God himself alone. But now this is a case. The release of the Holy Spirit comes when the apostle Paul has a dream. And this is what it says. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over. To Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately, immediately, we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. God had a different plan and agenda. You see, the word of God says that a man plans his way, but the Lord makes it come to pass. God had a purpose in Macedonia and God wanted them to go to Macedonia and so he released them to go into Macedonia. You see, the Holy Spirit guides, he leads and as, as a body of Christ, as children of God, as we unite in, in standing against and, and in standing against evil in our community, in standing in un, united in winning souls for Jesus Christ, in standing in showing love with one another, Jesus will lead us. The Spirit of God will guide us. And there are places he will lead us. There are places he will not lead us. There are things he will encourage us to do. There are things he will encourage us not to do. And in this case, they are released to go to Macedonia. And they did that with urgency, quickly. As we wait on God in this season, and as we pray and we seek God as, as a body, as, as the Christians and as the children of God in our world and in our society, when God has spoken, we need to act on it quickly. We need to act on it quickly. We need to be attentive to the Holy Spirit for his guidance. We might not be able to do everything. We might not be able to win every soul. But if we can work together as brothers and sisters in the Lord, knowing that we did something that God led us to do, that is more profitable than doing anything that God did not lead us to do. And so now you see that they have been released and they go. Now look at the, the results that followed. The results of the Spirit. I'm going to share a few stories here. Now if you look at Acts chapter 16 verse 13 to 15. As, as they went being led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit began to give them victory in situations. The Holy Spirit began to open hearts. The Holy Spirit's power began to work through them. We see here, 16 verse 13 to 15, and on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us she was a seller of purple, of purple in the city from, from Scythia, who worshipped God. The Lord opened a heart to her, uh, the Lord opened her heart to heed the things of uh, the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her husband were baptized, she she begged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So we were persuaded. The woman, Lydia, her heart began to receive the gospel. You see, the family is such a way that God loves us. He loves the world. He wants to do work in our world. He wants to win souls. But if you and I 
are not led, his power cannot be in activation. His power cannot help us. And when we are being led and we are doing things together, we are doing what he wants us to do. We begin to see victory. In this case, souls are being won. Hearts are coming to God. They are repenting and yielding and accepting the gospel. Again, let us look at another situation. Acts chapter 16, 16 to 18. Now it happened. As we went to pray that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much money by fortune telling this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation and this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Another victory. Demons are being cast out. We see as the children of God, as Paul and his, lead, uh, his followers began to be obedient to God, the spirit of God is now using them in deliverance, casting out demons. Many have taken this passage and walked around, going around looking for people to cast demons out of them. It is not the case. Focus on the calling and the destiny that God has given us. And if they, these situations come our way, God, by his grace and might, will use us to cast out demons. But what is important is this. You will ask your, yourself, isn't this girl indeed proclaiming the gospel? Isn't she helping them as going around and talking about them being the true men of God? Yes, she's doing that. But this was what was happening. She was operating by an evil spirit. And by the evil spirit going around and doing that, it made the evil spirit look even a bit more better, a bit, a bit more good, aligning itself with that which is of God and also making the holy men of God look unclean as they entertained the spirit to do their bidding. And so Paul got to a point and he said, enough is enough. I'm not going to allow this to continue. And he turned and he cast out the demon. You and I, God, we use mightily. We see a young lady, a slave that has been released, a, a fortune teller who has now been set free from an evil spirit. But going forward, again, you see the Holy Spirit at work. Them casting out the demon led them into trouble. When you read, when you read, uh, when you read Acts chapter 16, 25 to 34, it's a long passage, so I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to tell you what happened there. You can spend some time to read it later, those of you who are, who are making notes. Paul and Silas got into trouble for casting out the demon. They were, the, 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 the long story short, they ended up in jail. And while they were in, in jail, as fellow brothers in the Lord, they began to praise God. And as they praised God together, the word of God says that an angel, there was an earthquake. While believers came together praising God, there was an earthquake and the prison doors were open. They were saved. I mean, they had the chance to walk out of the prison, but look at what they did. They, they ministered the gospel to the prisoners, not just the prisoners, to the extent that even the, the prison guard, the head of the prison, uh, prison guards came and he saw that the doors were open. He thought he was in trouble. He was going to kill himself. And the apostle Paul says, no, don't kill yourself. We are here. To the extent that the prison, the head of the prison guard, his home, also accepted Jesus Christ. Do you see the victories that are happening here? Unity again. The children of God uniting. Paul and Silas, even in the, in the time of most difficult times, praising God, the Holy Spirit moves and begins to win souls. Sinners begins to be saved. People who are bound with chains receive freedom. So you see in these three different instances, a woman is saved. A young girl possessed with demon is saved. And then prisoners who are in prison 
were saved in the name of Jesus. Not just that, the prison guard, the head of the prison guard and his whole home were saved because the children of God were being obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God was moving mightily, using them and giving them results and victory. So now, these are the people that formed the Philippi church, the church in Philippians. They were made up of all sorts of people. The apostle Paul himself being a tent builder, followed by some people. A woman, a trader, who was a trader in purple, also being saved. A young girl who was telling fortune, being saved by Jesus Christ. Prisoners who were being saved, and prison guard who had been saved. Different people with different backgrounds, different situations, different genders, different race, different upbringing, different so, so, um, field of expertise and work, all coming together under one roof in Philippi to worship God. Just as these people had, been come, had all come together, they have different backgrounds, different situations, different circumstances, but had all come together under one roof by one thing. They all had one thing in common, and that one thing was Jesus Christ. They had fallen in love with Jesus. They had all yielded to Jesus, and they had come together as believers, worshiping and honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, that one thing that bonded them, Jesus, is the same thing that bonds you and I regardless of our background. In our congregation here, we have some people who are professional teachers. We have some people who are doctors and nurses. We have some people here who are engineers. We have some people here who are, who are young people. We have the young among us. We have people with all sorts of histories and circumstances. How Jesus had done great and mighty things for all of us. All of us as um, stories to tell. All of us come from different backgrounds. All of us have different scenarios and different situations. But, but, we all come together and we do what God has asked us to do because of the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, who loved us and he came to die. He gave himself and we have loved him. And by him, we are all found under one roof worshiping God, regardless of your race, regardless of your, um, your, your profession, regardless of your age, regardless of your culture, your history, your journey, we are all together as one in Jesus. And in Jesus, there is no discrimination. Jesus himself, he says he will build his gates, his church. In Matthew, I want to read it again. Matthew 16 verse 8, he says, and I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Haiti will not prevail against it. You and I must rely on the love that we, la we have in Jesus Christ. We must unite. We must come together and stand alongside one another, regardless of who we are, regardless of our calling, regardless of our purposes, we, whatever it is, God loves you and I and has brought us all together. And this is the time in this world where the world needs us the most to unite as one. In the name of our Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to begin to do the calling that the Lord Jesus has given us together. To win the souls, to pray for deliverance, to pray for his power and authority in our community. Child of God, you got to get this. You and I must get this. We are not alone. That is not the building of the church. We are together and Jesus is our Lord. He is our power, our authority, our everything. And when we, we can begin to come together in praises, in prayer, in winning souls, in doing all that God has asked us to do, 
we shall begin to see unending results. Because surely, truly, our community needs us. Surely, truly, our world needs us. Surely, truly, our world leaders needs us. Everything is going on in this world, but the people that have the answer cannot unite. Who are the children of God? Are not coming together with one mind, one calling, one purpose, one love in Jesus Christ to win and to be victorious for Jesus. This morning, I want to encourage you, child of God. Let us begin to prioritize the word unity and begin the kingdom agenda together. That is where we will begin to see breakthroughs. Not just any agenda, but the ones that are led of the Spirit. The ones that the Holy Spirit guides us to do. Because in this modern day, with all that is going on in our world, if we are not careful, we will try to do everything and not do any well. But we want to do that which the Father says we should do. And do it well. And, and expect and depend and rely on the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to have victory. Now look at what happens. The sweet fellowship of the family. Now they come together. Now if you look at Philippians, let's go back to our reference passage. Philippians chapter 1, 4 to 5. Also, in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul valued their fellowship, their, their union. And so you may ask yourself, what does the word fellowship mean? Fellowship is simply defined as a friendly association, especially with people who share one interest with people who share one interest. And what is our one interest? Jesus elevated and we being his servants. That is our one interest. In everywhere we go, in everything we do, seeking the well-being of the Father, the Father's will as it is in heaven on earth. The experience of Christian family and fellowship only exists because God the Father, through Jesus Christ, the Son, in the Spirit, has established in grace a relationship, a relationship with humankind. We have all come together through Jesus dying for you and I. And regardless of who you are, wherever you come from, you can walk in this, that we are where we are, we do what we do because Jesus loved us and he died for you and I. And so looking at fellowship, there are, there are three things I want us to touch on. The fellowship of service. We have to fellowship in service. Philippians 1 verse 5 says, Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. The, the, the Philippian church came one, they, they understood in fellowshipping together, having one agenda, one cause, and through that they had held it on until when Paul was writing this letter to them. Brothers and sisters, we have to fellowship in service. We have to look for somebody to stand with in serving God. We cannot do it alone on our own. We are God's family. We are God's children. We are God's bride. He loves us. He wants to do great for us and use us to do great. But the fellowship must be amongst us in service. And you see, our community needs us now. Our world needs us now. And you and I cannot begin to think that we have to do things on our own by ourselves. We can begin to come together, to win souls together. We can begin to come together to pray together. We can begin with one heart to seek justice in our world together. We can begin with one agenda in Jesus Christ's name. Do it together. Find somebody who will stand with you in prayer. Find a fellow believer 
who will stand with you in winning souls. Find a fellow believer. And then going forward, the fellowship of the Spirit. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4 says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellow, fellowship of spirit, if any action and mercy, fully, full, oh sorry, full, verse 2, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the, the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or con conceit, conceit, but in lawlessness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of all others. You see how God wants us to relate together. You see what God wants us to do. This is the spirit of the living God. This is how God wants us to be together as a uni united congregation in West Hudson Christian Center, in Kearney, in, in, in the town of Kearney, and in serving God in this town. This is how God wants us to come together. We need to have the spirit of God leading us to begin to love one another, to begin to be humble, serving one another, to begin to come together like this. And when we can do this spiritually, we become strong because the Holy Spirit begins to work through us, uses us to gain a lot. When we can get rid of pride, when we can get rid of selfish ambition, when we can get rid of self, um, uh, of, of, of gossip, when we can get rid of all the things that divide us, that breaks us apart, and allow the Spirit of God, the Spirit of oneness, the Holy Spirit, who leads us, who leads us all to truth and oneness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, begin for the fruits of the Holy Spirit to come out of us. We have to fellowship like that. And then the last part, the fellowship of suffering. The, the fellowship of the suffering. Jesus. Now let me read Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Jesus came to die a gruesome death. Jesus came to suffer. And you and I must understand that Jesus suffered for you and I. And in him, in him fighting for our salvation, in him working to end the, the chance of us have, coming into the Father's family, he suffered. And we have to understand that even in ministry, even in the calling that God has given us, there will be suffering. But this is it. We have to understand that whatever suffering that we are going through as we, we pursue the, the, the purpose and the agenda of God, we have to understand that we are bearing with Jesus in his suffering. And guess what? We don't have to suffer alone. We, we can understand that other believers can also come along us and suffer with us together. And so we, whatever suffering we, we are suffering as a church, as individuals, we, some of them, because we are purposely pursuing Jesus' agenda, we bear in his suffering. But not just that. We can also stand with one another in suffering. Whatever pain, whatever situation, whatever you're going through, you can see your fellow believers and sisters as people who can stand with you and I in prayer, in whatever is going on, to be able to go through your difficult time. As a church, by God's grace, we can do this in Jesus' name. We can do this. Because Jesus has suffered for us. And even though we suffer, no matter what the suffering that will come our way, whatever sacrifice we pay for Jesus Christ, 
we, by God's grace, will reap the reward, both on this earth and in heaven. We might not see it with our eyes, but there are many of the afflictions that come our way that God delivers us from. And so now coming to the last part of this sermon, look at the verse 6. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this, this, the, this, the sure future of the family. You see, we are in the family of God, united, coming together in uniting, in, in pushing God's will and purpose and agenda in our world forward. But look at this. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good thing, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God will complete everything he has said he will accomplish with you and I. Everything he has said, he will use the church of every community, of every town, of every environment to, to achieve. He will make sure it happens. So you and I can begin to take confidence in this. You and I can begin to, to trust him in this. You and I can begin to go out, to come together, agreeing together, to go out and win souls for the Lord Jesus together. He says we will be successful as we unite and as we depend on his leading. He will give us the victory. He will give us the power. He will give us the authority. And in this summer, as we begin to focus on our connecting with the community, child of God, please do not separate yourself. Do not be on your own in your home. By God's grace, we are going to begin a journey in our community of fulfilling the will of the Father in our community. We are going to pray together. We are going to seek the Lord together. And we are going to follow his guidance and his leadership together. Child of God, it is possible. If you are watching this, wherever you are, begin to connect with fellow believers in, in pursuing the God-given agenda. Child of God, it doesn't matter who comes up with the vision. It doesn't matter who comes up with the purpose. So long as God is the one leading it, we can come together as children of God to pursue the heaven agenda together. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your culture. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your race or your color. It doesn't matter. You and I, if God is leading us and we follow his leading, we can achieve a lot for the Lord Jesus Christ and make a difference in our world, make a change in our communities, make a difference in our society. God bless you, child of God. God bless you, child of God. My sermon has come to an end. But before I end, I want to ask you this. Are you united with the Father? Do you have a, a rich relationship with the Father in Jesus Christ? And if it is not, it is not too late. You can repent for anything that is distracting you and pulling you away from the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. From, from the family that God has brought you in through Jesus Christ. You can repent and ask him to begin with you afresh. Now, as you do this, also remember that you are part of God's big family. Being that you are part of fellow believers, other Christians, look for a Bible-believing church. That is led of the Spirit of God and settle there and be part of what God wants to do in the community. Be part of what God is doing through the congregation and allow yourself to be ministered to and also for you to be a blessing to others, child of God. God bless you. God makes his face shine upon you. God make his peace be with you in Jesus' name. Let me pray with you, please. Let us pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we praise you and we give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you. We thank you for your word that has come to us. Letting us understand that we are part of your big family. 
And as a family, you, you desire us to come together in fulfilling your agenda in our world. And so, Lord, whatever it is that is drawing us away from you, we pray you forgive us and bring us together. Help us to unite in living for you and in honoring you. Help us to fellowship with one another in love, in humility, in kindness, O oh Lord. We praise you, we worship you, and we pray that you will help us to hear you clearly so that, Lord, we may be led by you. Teach our hearts to hear your voice, Lord God, that you who is God, you begin to lead us and guide us into areas and what you want us to do as a congregation. We thank you, we praise you, we worship you, and we give you blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Child of God, our sermon has come to an end, and our service is just about to end. Please, I need you to pay attention to a few notices that I need to bring to our attention, your attention. By God's grace, as you may know, our governor has allowed churches to begin to congregate together. So long as 50 people, he, he's allowing 50 people to begin to congregate. And we thank God for such a great opportunity he's given us. We thank God before we couldn't congregate at all. But now, by God's grace, we can do it. As I'm, I'm standing here speaking to you now, other churches are now open, their buildings are open, and they are having services indoors. By God's grace, West Hudson Christian Center will be reopening soon. Please pay attention to your emails. We will communicate with you through email. By God's grace, we are putting, we are prayerfully putting together procedures that will ensure all of our safety when we come together. And we ask you that you be patient with us as the leadership team work on implementing procedures that will help us to worship together safely and peacefully in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention to your email and we will be communicating when we can come together. It's going to be very soon, so don't think you're waiting too long. But please pray for us while we do this. I also want to encourage you to continue your giving. We by God, God bless you for all your givings. We are still taking our givings, our tithe, our offering, our building fund, our missions offering, and our COVID love offerings. So please, as you feel led, please do follow the guidance through our email. There is digi digital option and also giving through checks. So please do pay attention to your emails. You will see the procedure right there. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the office. I also want to bring to your attention that we have started praying together as a body of Christ, as believers. We believe that the, the, the perfect way to begin everything, to, be, to gain any victory, is through prayer. The word of God says that you do not receive because you do not ask. And so we want to begin by praying. And if you did, if you've noticed last, um, last week, actually this Friday, la we actually last Friday, we, we were out. We, we, what we are doing now, we are doing the Jericho walk. We are going through our communities and our areas, praying right in your block. For now, in the month of June, pay attention. Every Friday at 7.30, we are coming out, you and your family, or you can team up with other believers in your area, other church members in your area, and let us begin to pray our walk, our community, our blocks, seven times, just praying, and we will be sending the prayer guides. Our dear sister Catherine will be taking lead on that, and so please do pay attention to the emails that we send, but we are beginning to pray and asking God to begin to move in our community. It is possible. God can do it with Christ. All things are possible. And we are definitely not going to gain victory without prayer. And so please prioritize spending time in prayer with your family indoors and also on Friday evenings going out for the prayer walks in your community. The prayer guides will be sent to you. God bless you so much. God make his face shine upon you. And I am blessed to have this opportunity to minister to you today. Have a blessed weekend, uh, a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen.